Podcast. How did this couple with two kids save two and a half million dollars, retire before 40, and move to Portugal? In 2011, Christina and Amon had stable government jobs. Christina was earning $70,000 as a federal attorney, and Amon was earning $98,000 as an urban planner. However, when Amon received an award for 10 years of service, he felt depressed because, you see, they were tired of being stuck in the exhausting rat race, and they couldn't see themselves being in a cubicle for another 30 years. There was so much more life they wanted to see. So he shared these thoughts with Christina, and together they set out to retire in 10 years in their early 40s. But their families didn't come from wealth. You see, Amon spent the first five years of his life in Nigeria, and at times his family was homeless and lived on food stamps. Christina was raised by a single mom, and they didn't have a lot of money. If they were going to retire early, they would have to learn it on their own and earn it every step of the way. However, by mastering three skills, earning more money, saving more money, and investing the difference, they were able to exceed their goals and retire in eight years at the ages of 39 and 41. At one point, they were able to save 70% of their income, and they ended up amassing two and a half million dollars in this time. One of their true strengths is that they did it as a family, first being on the same page as a couple, and also in passing on financial literacy to their two children. And oh yeah, they did it in jet-setting style, as this is a story that transpires across America, Asia, and Europe, and eventually they retired in Portugal. So, for those of us seeking financial independence and retiring early, let's go over the inspiring journey of Christina and Amon Browning from Our Rich Journey. First, they mastered the skill of saving, and the biggest expense for most people is housing. And Christina and Amon were able to live rent or mortgage-free for 10 years around the world. These are the five ways they did it. When they lived in Spain and Japan, they were working abroad, and their companies paid for their rent and utilities. When they lived in San Diego, they bought a condo and rented out the two other bedrooms which paid off their mortgage. When Christina was in law school in Los Angeles, she lived as a resident advisor, and they lived rent-free. In the San Francisco Bay Area, they rented a property that had a granny flat, and with permission from their landlord, they were able to then rent out the granny flat on Airbnb, which paid for their rent. And last, they were able to pay off the mortgage of their house through a rental property they owned. How they achieved this was that they bought a fixer-upper and lived in it for three years, and this time, the rents doubled. So then they downsized and bought a smaller fixer-upper condo, which they also lived in and fixed. And with the rent from the first bigger condo, they were able to pay the mortgages of both houses. And that's how they had no housing costs for 10 years. The second biggest expense for most people is transportation. And as millionaires, they were driving around a 17-year-old $800 used Honda they affectionately named Champagne. They knew that by saving money on their car, they could invest that money instead and move up their financial freedom date. But it wasn't always easy for them because before that, they owned a luxury BMW. So how did they shift their mindset? First, they realized that they didn't need the status of the car because they realized they would rather be wealthy than to look rich. Also, they eventually realized that a car is simply a tool to get from point A to point B, and champagne was meeting their family's needs. And lastly, they wanted to be a good example for their daughters and to teach them to value time over money and possessions. But even in the midst of saving up to 70% of their income, they didn't feel deprived. In fact, they were still able to do things like traveling. They did it by travel hacking. Travel hacking is when you take advantage of credit card points responsibly to get free nights and hotel stays. They calculated that one year, they were able to obtain $20,000 in travel benefits, and they were able to travel to 10 countries for free Next, they mastered the skill of earning because ultimately they realized they could only save so much money and they were able to let their creative sides loose and find money out of thin air. They have dozens of ideas for side hustles, from making $10,000 a month on Airbnb, from renting out your swimming pool on a website called Swimply, and to solving medical mysteries on websites like CrowdMed. But here are my favorite of the three that they executed. First, they were able to earn $25,000 as Uber drivers, though they never had to take a ride. This occurred when Uber was originally developed in San Francisco and was fighting Lyft and taxis for market share. Uber was enticing drivers to work for them and was paying drivers $20 per hour just to leave the app open and to pick up rides when requested. Because Uber was so new, no one was actually using the app and all they had to do to collect money was to leave the app open. Next, Christina created letters from the Tooth Fairy and sold them on Etsy. How this worked was that parents were able to order customized letters, and Christina designed and printed out stickers and created little letter packages. She was able to find a niche on Etsy that had low upfront costs and could be easily scaled to any size. Next, they were able to recognize inefficiencies in the market, and this included scouring the IKEA as is section and then flipping them for money. They were also able to find empty wine crates that were thrown away and able to sell them for a profit. And last, 
they were able to convert wood pallets into furniture and sell them for a profit. Side hustles not only have the benefits of increasing your income, but they also come with tax advantages. But the most important thing to remember is to invest all of your side hustle money. And the next big skill they mastered was investing because they understand that no matter how much money they saved or earned, they would not be able to retire early if they didn't invest. So they took their 70% savings rate and invested it in real estate and the stock market. When they got started in real estate investing, they didn't have enough money for a down payment. So what they did was purchase a lease option in San Diego in 2000. They sold the lease option for a good profit and used it to purchase their first condo. When they moved to Spain, they rented the condo and eventually sold it. However, the most lucrative real estate investment were three live-in flips that they did in the San Francisco Bay Area. They focused on purchasing properties in good neighborhoods that needed work. Instead of hiring contractors to do the work, they did the work themselves. They lived in the first property, fixed it up, took out the equity from the property, and used it to purchase the next property. They ultimately did this with three properties and profited $400,000. With their real estate profits, they invested it into the stock market. Amon and Christina believe that financial literacy is important and is the first step in investing. And ultimately, they favor index funds because they are simple, allow for diversification, have low expenses, outperform mutual funds, and have low risk. Like many in the FIRE community, VTSAX is one of their favorite funds. And they document their investing experience on their YouTube channel and also leave a link to the playlist in the description below. So as you can see, they mastered saving money, earning money, and investing money, and they were able to accumulate two and a half million dollars. And with this money, they were able to retire to Portugal. After living in California, Japan, and Spain, they eventually retired to Portugal. They were deciding between Spain and Portugal, but ultimately found Portugal to be incredibly welcoming, and Portugal came with a number of financial benefits. They found applying for the D7 passive income visa process incredibly smooth, as the visa was in English, which was not the case for many other countries. They appreciated the tax benefits, and as non-habitual residents, they didn't have to pay Portuguese income tax for 10 years. They were able to solve the problem of healthcare as early retirees, because they only had to pay $1,500 the entire year for a family of four for private health insurance. In America, it would cost them approximately $25,000. Though markedly more affordable, they also found that the quality of the healthcare is better than in the US, as it ranks number 12 on the list of the World Health Organization compared to the United States, which is at 37. And while the fire number was based on retiring in the San Francisco Bay Area, they found the cost of living to be especially attractive in Portugal. As rents are a quarter of the price, home values are significantly cheaper, and they have access to affordable healthcare food and education costs. And now, living in Portugal since 2019, they have assimilated well and have bought homes and rental properties and enjoying the good life in Portugal. One of the most notable things about their story is that they were able to achieve early retirement as a family. And this starts with Amon and Christina, who are definitely on the same page when it comes to money, as they share the same attitudes and values about saving money, earning money, and investing. But they go a step further and openly talk about money with their kids, because in so many families, money is a source of stress and seldomly discussed, and the girls excel in this area. The girls have custodial accounts, 529 accounts, and teen brokerage accounts, and they have their own YouTube channel explaining investing to other kids and they can tell you what an index fund is and how it is different from an actively managed mutual fund, and they can even talk about the 4% rule for early retirement. You see, the Brownings believe that their goal is to provide the next generation with more opportunities than they had, and instead of giving their kids consumer gifts, they have decided to give them the gift of financial literacy. And this is all part of their plan to build generational wealth. So, from civil servants stuck in the rat race to early retirees in Portugal, the Brownings are a great example of how one focused and dedicated family can achieve a fire. So if you like this video, check out these other videos I made about other interesting people who achieved fire. And this has been the Tin Man at Tin Man Fire, and we'll see you next time.